welcome to this webcast, Getting Started with SharePoint Workflow and Forms. Today, we're going to delve into how to get started with SharePoint Workflow and Forms in Office 365. First, we're going to walk through a history of workflows in SharePoint, showing the transition from on-premise to online. We're going to discuss different options available, and then we're going to pick the best one, which works well with Office 365 in the cloud. And finally, we're going to take a simple business workflow and implement it. The whole webcast will be around 15 minutes long. First, a bit about myself. My name is Saul Tombak and I've been involved in SharePoint since SharePoint 2007 beta came out. I've been using SharePoint and other Microsoft technologies since then. These webcasts are meant to share my experience and knowledge with, with all you guys. Let's start with a short history of workflows in SharePoint, starting with SharePoint 2010. SharePoint 2010 made use of declarative workflows. These were created inside SharePoint Designer and they could be triggered with either on a site, list or content type. There were compiled workflows created with Visual Studio and Windows Workflow Foundation, which could be created by the developer and deployed into the SharePoint environment. Both of these were great at providing workflows, but required a high level of technical skill to be created. We made use of InfoPath 2010 to create the forms. Due to the technical nature of creating workflows, a number of third party vendors came out. The three main ones being Nintex, which is my favorite, K2 and Agile Point. These made it much easier to create and maintain workflows using the browser rather than a separate tool. In SharePoint 2013, a change took place making use of Windows Workflow Foundation 4. Workflows were now cr created only using SharePoint Designer 2013 and could only be associated with lists and webs and content type associations no longer supported. Many users still prefer to use the third party vendor products, which made it easier for power users and business users to create workflows. With the arrival of SharePoint Online, SharePoint 2010 and 2013 workflows were still supported. SharePoint Designer 2013 could be used to create the workflows. The big announcement in 2014 was that InfoPath would be deprecated, which sent users in search of new form solutions. The out of the box solution still relied on SharePoint Designer to be able to create and edit workflows. We now arrive at the present with two new additions to Office 365, Power Apps and Flow. Power Apps allow us to visually design mobile forms easily in the browser or Power App Studio. They can store the data in various stores, including SharePoint lists. Flows is a new workflow engine built into Office 365. It can interact with many different services, including SharePoint lists. It is easy to use and configure, browser-based, and integrated into the Office 365 experience. Let's move on to a plan on how we could create a form with associated workflow in Office 365. We will store our data inside a SharePoint list, create a mobile form using Power Apps, and trigger our work, business workflows using Flow. So come on, let's get started. Let's begin the demo. The first thing that I've done is I've created a blank team site here where we're going to deploy our list into so let's get started and let's do our list. In order to do our list, we launch our PowerShell as an administrator. And the first command that we enter, is we're going to start keeping a log of everything that we're doing using start transcript. Trans start transcript is a very useful command that you'd always run whenever you're doing PowerShell, whether it's on a live or a test environment, it keeps track of what you've done right. And it allows you to also to keep a track of the things that you might have done wrong. First, we need to connect to our SharePoint site. So there I've got my URL and I've stored my credentials in Windows Credential Manager so that I don't, uh, so that it's nice and safe and secure there. And I've called that credential 0365. So when I click enter, it's now gonna go and it's gonna connect to my site. Yay, I've connected to my site. Let's give a check that I have connected to my site. Let's see if I can get the web. Yay, I can get the training web. We, we, we're, we're on track. So let's create, using our PMP PowerShell command, let's, let's create the list. So we say a new PMP list, the name is joiners, it's a generic list, and I want it to display on the quick launch bar on the left hand side. So now that we've, got, we've created our list, we now need to add some columns. So we're going to use the title for the joiners name, and I think we should have maybe the name of the manager as a user field. Uh, maybe we should have a checkbox to see whether or not we want to give the new joiner a laptop. 
and maybe another checkbox to see if we want to give the new joiner a mobile phone. Right, let's go and have a look now at our site and see what we have created. You click refresh over here and we see in the left hand side the joiners and the quick launch bar. We click on that and here's our list. We've got title, manager, laptop, mobile. Let's rename title to join joiner's name. There we go. So perfect. So now we've created our list, it's up and running. Now what we need is a nice form for the list. So we can see over here we can connect, we can create a, a power app form straight by clicking over here and we ask for the name. We're gonna call it the joiners form. Click create and one, two, three, off it zooms. Right, so Power Apps has now starts, has created our, our forms. Let's have a look. This is our browsing form. This is our details form. And this is our edit screen. Let's have a look at the details form. Let's make it a little bit bigger. I'm not sure why it's so small. And we can see that the order of the of the fields isn't in the in, in the order that we would like. So if we just click here, it comes along and it gives us the ability to reorder. So what I want is I want the title first, which is going to contain the name. I want the manager second, and I want the laptop and mobile third and fourth. Over here, I don't like it being called title. I want to call joiner's name. So we just double click there. And there we go. Let's go and do the same thing to the edit screen. We just click on the field. We're going to reorder it. Title first, manager second, laptop and mobile third and fourth. And again, we're going to call title joiner name. And now we have completed all the work that we need right now on our Power App joiner form. So we're going to save it. Do we give it a name? Yes, we did. Uh, we'll just leave it the default and we click save. And it's saving off to Power Apps. Beautiful. Let's do a test. Let's give it a run and see how it works. So when we shut this down, yep, go away, bye bye. We come back and we say, I want my Power App. My power apps. Just give me a list of all the power apps. Here we go. This. So we come over here and we say play, and now it's going to launch our form in the browser. This can also launch on your mobile phone or anywhere or any other mobile device that you might be using or you might have. It says new joiners form coming up, and we get our search form. So let's head it. And let's add our first employee, a guy called Scott. So I'll be his manager. We'll give him a laptop, we'll give him a mobile phone, maybe, and click the tick button and save. Now we've got a new employee called Mr. Scott Henselman. Welcome aboard. Great. Now we know of, let's go and see if this actually saved the information in our list. We'll just navigate to our training site. We'll click on joiners and wait, the form saved the information directly into our SharePoint list. That's perfect. Now what we need to do is we need to go and we need to create a workflow. So the same way that we, we launch Power Apps, we say create a flow. Now we can see on the let on it presents us different types of flows that we could create. We could send an email, send an approval email. Um, and send a tweet, loads of other different things. What we're going to do is we're going to click send more. And we're going to start with a blank workflow. Uh, workflow. Great. First thing that we do over here is we give it a nice name, which is going to join us. Workflow. We're then going to say that the, the action that we're doing is SharePoint, and we're going to it's going to be trigger when a new item is created. 
we give it the URL that we are using, which is um, slash train. And then when we come over here, it automatically says, well, I know the list. And I say, great. So when that happens, I want an action to occur. The action that I want to occur is an Office 365 task. And the task that I want to occur is I want to send an approval email, which is an email requesting for the management to approve it. Who are we sending it to? We know that we already have specified who the manager is. So we go along here, we find the email address, and we say send it to that manager. The subject will be an approval request for this particular person. We saved his name in the title. Cool. We have two options, approve or reject. And in the body of the, of the approval email, we say, please hand to either or reject this joint request. And that's done. So now, once that's finished, we then need to have an if statement which will either say, if it's approved, do this, if it's not, if it's rejected, do that. So we add a step, and the step that we do, we add is a, is a condition, and we say that when the selected option is equal to approve, then if it is approved, we will then send a notification by email. The subject can be approved, and we can say the joiner's request for Mr. Title is approved. Let's go to the reject. Add an action, same thing. We can send a notification by email. We're going to say rejected. We're going to say the new joiner's request for Mr. Title is rejected. Perfect. And now we say create the flow and one, two, three. It's going to save it for us. And now we've got a workflow. Should we go and test it? Yeah, I think we should test it. We still got our PowerShell app over, uh, uh, over here. So let's just add a new user, All right? So let's hire another Scott this time. And we let's give him the same manager, give him a laptop, give him a mobile, and say go. Right now, let's go and have a look at what's happening in our list. When we come over here to our list, we can quickly come along and say refresh. And yay, we've got somebody else in our list. And now here we are in our Outlook on Office 365, and we can see that we've got an approval request for Scott Gunthry. Remember, that's where we put in the title field, and it says approval request for Scott Gunthry. Please, can you either approve or reject this new joiners request? I think we're going to approve him. I think he's quite a good candidate. Let's see what happens. If we click approve, it says, thank you very much. Your response has been successfully registered. Now, this is a big upgrade from, from uh, workflows on premise, where when we were doing it through the through a mobile phone that was not connected to our corporate network, we were having major problems getting the approval working. And now we immediately got the other notification email that we said, which, which would have the title of approved. So there is the subject title approved, and it says the new joiner request for Scott Country is approved. This is fantastic. We have now, in under 10 minutes, gone from creating a list, creating a form, and creating a workflow. We now come to the end of the webinar. I'd like to give a very big thank you to all of you for joining me and for listening. I hope that you learned something new today and that I hope that you will look out for my next set of webinars. 
coming up soon. If you'd like to contact me, you can either contact me on my website, shareanswer.co.uk, or you can contact me, connect with me on Twitter at sp underscore news. Okay, that's a wrap. Bye.